I'll just hmm, there you go. Okay, so um, my name is uh, Stephen Colbram, and I am the head of the College of Law, Criminology and Justice, and also the Dean of Law. And we have with us tonight uh, Nicola Corbett Jarvis, who is both our third year coordinator as well as our what are you, a sort of a coordinator of, or director of teaching and learning <laughs> in our um, college as well. And we should be joined a little bit later by um, uh, Constance Lee as well, who's one of the first year um, uh, lecturers. So what I'll do is I will share a um, PowerPoint with you and we can talk to that and we've got plenty of time for questions at the end. So I'll just share this. Okay, so you should be able to see that coming through on your screen now. Can you see that, Bernice? Yep, okay, that's fine. And Constance has now joined us as I suggested she would, so there you go. All right, so um, the purpose of this evening's presentation is to enable us to um, let you know more about the college and uh, how we, the courses that we teach and how we go about teaching law and also uh, to give you the opportunity to ask questions um, that you might have about the law program. Okay, so a little bit about me. I am really interested in online legal education and I have been teaching online constantly for about something like 20 years so far. <laughs> So quite a long time, way, way back when the internet first started, I, I started uh, teaching online and have been done and been doing so continuously ever since. One of the distinguishing features about our particular college is that we're 100% online. So we don't have any on-campus students. So we're different from the vast majority of law schools in Australia for that reason, but it's a big advantage for online students because we can focus on um, presenting and delivering our courses online um, and making sure that that's the best that it can be. Okay, so a little bit about our mission. I know people think, oh, well, mission statements. Well, in fact, we do try to live up to this one. So we want to be, and I think we are, the premier online legal education provider in Australia for legal education. Um, we're actively engaged in teaching online. We research about ways of improving online teaching and we have community engagement with online communities as well. So that's really our primary focus, but we are committed to these other aspects and that's the rule of law, making sure that uh, we promote high standards of ethical conduct because one of the features of um, a legal career is the necessity to um, maintain your ethical standards because if you fall foul of the ethical rules it can lead to you actually being struck out of the profession so it's very important that you understand those from day one essentially even things such as some um, instances of plagiarism during your university career can actually delay admission into the profession at a later date so it's it's important that you understand those things straight up so professional responsibility, ethical conduct and community service are the other aspects of our mission. But first and foremost, online legal education. All right, our history, we're a relatively um, young law program. It um, was launched in 2011 by Justice Michael Kirby, as he then was. And the first intake of students was in term one, 2011 and there were 60 students. So since 2011, a few things have happened. Um, firstly, we've grown to over 800 students. So there's been quite a lot of growth and all of these students are online learners. The other aspect of the degree that's changed is that initially when it was set up, there were 24 core units. So you had absolutely no choices to electives, but over time, what we've done is we've introduced more and more electives. So you can see that in 2021, which is now, you've basically got 16 core units that you do, and there's eight electives from a choice of 20. So there's a lot of variety in terms of elective choices so that you can pursue things that are of a particular interest to you. Um, it's also possible for you to undertake units, so a subject we call a unit, 
you can actually undertake those at other institutions as well if we don't offer that particular unit that you're interested in and that can count towards your degree so there are even greater options as well but initially when you start your law degree you'll largely be doing core units all right um, <clears throat> some aspects of our law degree that we really wanted to emphasize is that firstly it's a three-year law degree so quite often law degrees are four years in duration the legal practitioners admission board which is the body that accredits us, enables uh, law degrees to be completed in three years, and in some cases less than three. Our particular degree is three years, and our focus is on making sure that we have high quality teaching. So at the moment, we're ranked second out of all of the law schools. I think last count there's 39 or 40 law schools in Australia, so we're ranked second for quality teaching in the Good Universities Guide for 2020. And that's one of the things you'll notice about our particular program is people are really dedicated to teaching and making sure that you actually understand um, <clears throat> the concepts that we're trying to get across to you as you go through the particular degree. The other aspect of our degree is it's very flexible. So our classes generally aren't during the day, they're in the evening. And like all law degrees, there's lots of reading, but um, you can participate through these types of Zoom sessions in workshops. So it's very flexible. They're all recorded. So if you can't attend a particular workshop because you've got some other um, commitments, well, that's accommodated by the recordings which you can access. So it's very flexible in terms of enabling you to shift time. Another aspect of flexibility is that generally we try to have all of our um, unit materials available to the student two weeks before the unit starts. So on the learning management system, which is a system called Moodle, it has all of the materials and the readings and the videos and all sorts of things that you will need to, to participate in uh, or to work with, but they're available in advance. So if you have blocks of time that you can dedicate towards your studies, you can advance further in your particular unit than at the current week. So you might be in week one, but you might have done a couple of weeks work because that material is already available to you. So it's flexible in that way as well. Other aspects that you'll see this evening is that we do have some innovative and contemporary electives. So we do introduce new types of electives and choices so that uh, we can take advantage of new areas that are developing. An example of that, and you'll see this a little bit later, are things like um, legal uh, technology and how that's impacting the profession. Another important aspect of your law degree is skills, because at the end of the day, the law keeps changing, but what you will learn, um, apart from the basic principles, is the ability to handle change. So how to look up things, to know what the current state of the law is, and all of those types of skills that are necessary for you to become an effective lawyer. Because the law is never static, it does change all the time. So those skills are critical in you being able to cope with that change and, and you know, advise your clients accordingly. The other aspect um, of our particular degree is, is that it's smaller. So students are a lot more visible. And I think generally it's fair to say our staff are very supportive. So uh, if you have a particular problem, you can talk to your staff, you talk to me, uh, and you can certainly talk to other students as well. So that's a big advantage. There are quite a number of larger law schools and people can tend to get lost in those types of law schools because of the sheer number of students. But um, I'd certainly encourage you to get to know your fellow students and get to know your lecturers as well. And you can easily do that, particularly if you participate in the um, online workshops. And I suggest you do that if you can manage it. Okay, I think uh, at this point I'll hand over to Nicola. Thanks, Stephen. Um, so here on the slide, we've just got a list of all of the programs that are available at CQU. And the reason why we just wanted to point those out is because you don't have to decide right this second whether or not you'd like to do a double degree. You can decide later on that you would like to move from a straight law degree to a um, a combined or double degree. Um, so there's flexibility there in terms of if you get a start to um, 
go forward with your studies and you start to find areas of interest, you're able to uh, obviously make changes. And we know from um, look, talking to lawyers in the profession that highly skilled, multi-skilled, multidisciplinary um, uh, lawyers is really the lawyer of the future. So um, the lawyers of the future will have an understanding of things like marketing or technology and IT or um, understand the client's business on a much deeper level. Um, and if you go into working government, then again, you'll need that multidisciplinary understanding of the law. So perhaps something in criminology or psychology would be useful there. Many of our law students uh, go into legal practice, but many also go into a very wide um, range of careers. And so a double degree offers the potential to broaden your employability, broaden your skill and knowledge and, um, and appeal to a wider range of uh, potential employers. Thanks, Stephen. So here we can see that CQU is an accredited law degree. We're accredited with the Legal Practitioners Admissions Board. That provides for um, the knowledge component that is necessary to uh, become a lawyer. So there's a knowledge component and then a practical legal training component. The um, all law schools are focused on the knowledge aspect of that, uh, and we provide all of the. Uh, knowledge components that you require for admission as a lawyer. Now, when we talk about um, the requirements for admission, their students must tick off the 11 areas of knowledge that are known as the Priestley 11. And many of the law schools that are have four year degrees have two criminal law units or two tort law units etc we've managed to condense things so that you gain everything that you need but in a shorter amount of time in just one unit so that you can focus on electives and of course that's where you can start to hone your interest and expertise in particular areas so we comply with all of the requirements but we do it in a really efficient way thanks Stephen. So just to give you an example, the Priestley 11, as I say, it doesn't translate to 11 units or subjects at other universities. It can be a lot more than that. But you can see here that we have, in essence, um, managed to condense that into the units that you see on the slide there. And those are all core units, which means that you'll definitely get them done before you graduate and you'll therefore meet the admissions requirements. And you can see that um, these are all core units. You have to study them at any university, but we've also got some skill embedding in those units as well to really help you transition to legal practice. Thanks, Stephen. And so now I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the electives that we have. You've got eight electives, eight units that you can um, you can mix up however you like, or you could focus on particular things that really appeal to you. One of the streams or one of the themes that we have at CQU is future focused electives. So you can see on the slide there, we've got some that are focused on technology. And this is going to be a big thing in legal practice in the future. So will never replace lawyers altogether, or at least I hope not, because you need that human client interaction. But what we do see is the greater use of technology as part of legal practice. So things like helping, um, helping you draft a contract, helping you to analyze evidence and prepare a case, for example, or maybe even a, a, an app that helps people reach a settlement or negotiation. So there is scope for technology to really be incorporated into daily practice. And so we've really tackled that head on with some really innovative electives. So you'll see we've got legal automation there and the law of startups and innovation and intellectual property law. And in fact, Stephen is quite the guru in this area as well. It's one of his one of his loves and main uh, areas of interest. So you've really got um, an expert profile here if you're really interested in merging information technology and the law in your studies. Thanks, Stephen. 
We've also got some really topical or current electives and we do revamp them quite regularly. So um, animal law is new. So a brand new unit that really responds to the fact that this has become quite the hot topic, both in uh, research, so legal research and also in the media as well. We've got a new unit there called Australian First Nation Peoples and the Law, again, responding to contemporary things that we're seeing in the research literature. And of course, um, these other topics that you see there, so human rights law and environmental law, they've been topics for a very long time, but we take a contemporary approach to the units and really try and connect it to what we're seeing in the media or in government policy. Thank you. Now, if you're more interested in the commercial side of things, and some students are, they want to merge that business law connection, then we've got a, a range of electives to suit as well. You can see we've got commercial law, revenue law, which focuses on tax. We've got resolving civil disputes because it may surprise you to learn that most litigation disputes actually settle before they reach court. And that's usually because of the cost involved. So if you can learn how to engage in me mediation and negotiation and become more skilled in that area, then you're going to look quite attractive to a potential law firm recruiting you. So these uh, electives are, again, thematic and really focused on preparing lawyers who want to work in that commercial space. Thank you. And finally, I wanted to bring to your attention that we have practice focused learning at uh, CQU. So we have two core units that are really design designed to upskill you in core legal skills areas. So as Stephen said earlier, the law doesn't stand still. It it can in some areas move really quickly and what we therefore need as lawyers is the ability to update our understanding and knowledge of the law we need to therefore be able to research how the law has changed so that we can properly advise our clients so legal research is a core skill and we've got a unit dedicated to that and then legal practicum is about really taking what you've learned at law school and putting it into a very practice focused context so we've got um, the opportunity to do work placements, but also simulations for those people who can't obtain work placements is really geared to ensure maximum flexibility while skill building at the same time. And then on that level, we also know that students want to feel prepared for practice and many students like to undertake electives that reflect that. So we've got legal advocacy, which really focuses on delivering legal arguments in a courtroom, legal drafting, which focuses on drafting documents, preparing letters to clients, those kinds of things. Uh, again, we've got resolving civil disputes, which is a common thing in litigation in uh, civil matters like personal injury and contract. Um, we've got criminal law in practice for those who are aspiring to work as lawyers in the magistrates court, district court, those kinds of environments. And then we've got family law, employment law, conveyancing and succession, which are the bread and butter work of the legal profession. So if you take those, then you've got sort of a broad range of knowledge and understanding across the common areas of legal practice. And I think that's about me done for now. I'm going to pass you on to Constance, who's going to look at how we teach law. Thank you, Nicola. So how do we teach online? Um, CQ is a leader in online law education, as Stephen pointed out previously. So over the last decade, we've developed innovative technology or strategies to effectively deliver our teaching materials using online technology. So let me take you now through some of the technologies we use uh, and how best to approach that. So everything happens on um, through our LMS, which is our learning management system. And what we use is Moodle at CQU. So it's beneficial for you at the outset to familiarize yourself with this learning management tool um, because it's a central point of access where you can find everything you'll need. Uh, and these include, but are not limited to teaching materials and resources, integrated skills workshops, um, also engagement forums with other students and the teaching staff. And it's very useful for you to um, get close to and engage with fellow students and as well as get to know your lecturers, um, as well as student support services that allow you to have a um, 
a more facilitated and easier time when you're going through certain things in your life or you're going through anxiety related to picking up study again after a long break, for example. So as online study is a holistic experience, we've developed um, different points of, or angles of delivery so that you can access the best um, teaching or learning experience possible. Each week, your academic will provide educational resources for the week in the respective tile, and we'll go through this format together in a few slides. Um, make sure that you've reviewed your study notes, the lecture recordings, uh, visual learning, and weekly message from the unit coordinator updating you on the developments in the unit. So make sure that your CQ email is readily accessible and you know how to use that, um, that you have um, access to YouTube, Moodle, and also MS Teams has been a very um, useful tool for engaging with other students as well as getting uh, obtaining guidance from your lecturer as well directly and um, in a community setting. So there are a lot of different technologies that it's best to get familiar with as soon as you can. Um, thank you, Stephen. If I can go to the next slide. So what we do at CQ uh, Law School is we inter interweave synchronous and asynchronous modes of delivery through Moodle and Zoom. So we're using Zoom right now, but and Moodle, you will familiarize yourself as the LMS. So in order to allow for the flexibility, as Stephen talked about, which is a strength of, of online education, uh, we have asynchronous sessions so that they're pre-recorded lectures that you can access through LMS or Moodle um, at a time of your choosing whenever you can during that week. And that allows for you to, uh, in your busy schedule, to be able to access this when you, when you have time. Um, now, synchronous Zoom sessions are also very important. So these are the interactive sessions that are best viewed as complements to your asynchronous learning. So what you do independently, which um, is enabled through this kind of online learning, um, you can complement through this interaction that you have with your peers as well as your lecturer every week um, through these um, asynchronous Zoom sessions. So, and these are essential because they help you establish a connection. And um, it, it's frequently been said that if online, the, the weakness or, or some of the, uh, some of the things that you can experience online um, is that you don't have an engagement with fellow students or you feel isolated. And that happens when you don't interact um, with your other students. And this can be offset by using these interactive Zoom sessions. Um, and also, as we'll talk about, by going onto MS Teams and those kind of forums, and you can actually create this uh, legal study community and also talk to your lecturers and obtain guidance from them. So do make most of the forums, if you can, available to you and you can experience, um, get rid of that sense of isolation. And also tap into the resources available for you on Moodle as well. Um, in your own time to make the commitments to attend live Zoom sessions. I think that's a very important thing to do to, to show up for these workshops. Um, so with regard specifically to MS, MS Teams, um, this has um, been a recent addition to our, our approach. And it's, I think that it's been extremely useful in enhancing the sense of belonging that a lot of students might lack because they don't have the face-to-face the -face engagement. So this is a platform where you can share your ideas with fellow students as well as obtain feedback, but this, the layout is particularly conducive to that. So um, it, in addition to having the Moodle, uh, to have that community in a MS Teams um, allows it to be a more, um, I don't know, a communal experience. You can, you can remind, it's a good reminder that you we're all in this together and that, um, that you're all working towards the same goal together as and make the law degree the best experience it can be. Um, thank you, Stephen. So we'll have a look at the tiles now. So, all right, so this is what you should see when you go into your Moodle, um, into that particular unit you've enrolled in. So this slide is a very good representation of what you can expect to see when you go into your unit for the first time. Um, the first few tiles at the top here, you can see are tiles that have class schedules, academic skills videos, as well as assessment information. And these are all very important general course information that you will need um, throughout the term. 
And the next few tiles are those um, are that are placed in chronological order here, and each should represent the weeks and their corresponding topics for study. And once you go through these tiles, if you click on the first week, for example, all the materials for the topic should be made available there, like study notes, learning guides, and lecture videos, which you can access in your own time. Once again, it's about being able to do the, the learning that you can do independently um, in your own time, but also interweaving that with the engagement that you can have interactively with your peers as well as your lecturer that really helps to optimize your experience um, learning online. Thank you, Stephen. So the next slide, we'll look at some supporting resources. Um, so there are many resources to support you in addition to the MSM Teams we talked about, MS Teams and also Moodle. Um, but there are also like other resources available to you that you might be um, interested in and that might enhance your experience overall um, studying online. And I'd like to talk about some useful resources that are not necessarily up on this slide here, but, but you might definitely seek while you're here studying because it'll be a few years before you graduate. So student counselling services um, provide free student counselling uh, and confidential support for students while you go through, if you may experience trauma or stress or anxiety in your life um, while you're studying a law degree. And law degrees can be quite um, stressful at times because of the volume of work or, or if you have uncertainty or lack of confidence in your study abilities, for example. Uh, academic Learning Centre. Now, the mission of the Academic Learning Centre is to provide students with academic advice and guidance. And this is more general advice regarding your, honing your techniques um, in, in study. Um, so if you feel like your academic skills are rusty, for example, it's a great place to start to obtain guidance um, from the ALC. There's IT and library services made available to you um, through CQU. Um, and you can definitely go through a comprehensive list of library services on the library webpage um, on, at, on the CQ uh, webpage as well. There's also very importantly, because we are an online uh, school, a uh, law school, it's important to have technological support. So TASAC is there for you to assist you in your technological needs. Um, like not all of us start off as IT boss like Stephen, um, and though it's a and it's not a requirement to study online, so don't feel the need to feel uh, to be an IT boss or an IT expert to start. You have services that can support you through your study. So reach out to TASEC um, and the digital team to help you, and there will be an IT support section on my CQ student portal that you can access and there will be contact information for them, um, even navigating Moodle. Um, if you need any help with that, just give them a call. They're always happy to help. Thank you, Stephen. So I'll go to the next slide. Uh, so let's talk about assessments. So there are many different types of assessments that, can, um, that your assessment items can take. Um, and some of these we can talk about um, so you don't get shocked when you go in to um, start your learning and then you have these, these forms of assessment you've never seen before. So the first um, type of assessment you might see is take-home papers. Now, these are written assessments that you take the form of a, a kind of exam because they have timers of the essence. They give you a limited time period in which to complete the exam, uh, the paper, uh, and our uh, approach moving forward is six hours for take home papers. Is that correct, Nicola? That, that would be right. Yeah. So these are to be uploaded and submitted by Moodle. And you'll find that, um, they, that your task sheet should have information regarding that. And if you need any technological support, of course, call TASAC and they will help you with any technical difficulty you're facing. Um, another form, a common form of assessment would be written assignments requiring research and research forms of assessment, uh, probably most of you are quite familiar with. It's a le lengthier period assigned for completion, but requiring you take some preparatory steps of researching and then writing. Now, these will require you to comply with the citation method being used, which is AGLC4 for law. Um, and there are plenty of library and, pl and plenty of electronic resources. And at this point, obviously, um, CQ Library would be a good resource for you. 
um, quizzes. So they're online quizzes that are made available via Moodle and you can complete them within a limited time allocated by your coordinator. Um, and with regard to quizzes, please read the instructions carefully and follow them because they have, um, you know, automatic posting if, if it, within a time frame. If, it, if, it, if you don't comply with the, the, it can be a bit finicky like that because it's a techno, it's online um, format. Um, another form of assignment is group work. Now, this is any, any type of assignment that requires you to form a group of two or more peers. Um, this usually is uh, aimed at refining your teamwork and communication skills. So um, there are various platforms you can use in the process, like Microsoft Teams is a good one, but also on your Moodle platform, there are general forums available for you to be able to communicate with each other, um, uh, email as well. Also, visual exercises and internships. Now, these are assessments which require an oral component. So they have an oral component or a presentation of information. Now, um, an oral presentation of information. This will examine your presentation styles and your like oral skills, obviously, in addition to um, testing your, your um, ability to identify relevant and coherent uh, information, uh, relevant information and present them in a coherent way. Um, reflective practice is, uh, is a more and more popular form of um, uh, assessment and requires to exercise your critical thinking abilities. So to consider more deeply relevant substantive issues and then consider their possible practical implications after reflecting on some of the conceptual issues um, that are important. Uh, and they can take the form of reflective diaries in some of the units. Moots. Now, a moot is basically um, a court simulation of an arbitration proceeding. Now, the process of mooting therefore involves analyzing a legal problem. So it, it has a research component. Um, you have to think about the relevant law and develop written submissions, which must be presented in the form of an oral argument before a judge or judges. Now, this requires both a, uh, you re test your reasoning abilities as well as your writing, your written expression, but also tests how you go in uh, oral reasoning. So that's, those are two components that test it through mooting. Um, class participation. These marks are usually a small percentage assigned for um, synchronous sessions. Um, so your live um, workshops. Um, and test, uh, they basically assess your participation um, in the unit. So there's building apps using Joseph. Now, this is an innovative uh, unit in your later years. Um, it's an elective where students decide to create a legal app. I'm not sure if Stephen still runs this, but it's probably his um, area of expertise. Um, so that's something that maybe you can look forward to in your later years and do it to do it as an elective. Now, before we leave this topic, let me just add that the structure of your assessment will determine the type of approach you wish to take to study. Um, so early on, um, it, it's wise to know exactly what you're facing so that you know exactly what strategy you're going to take in terms of that assessment item. For example, in terms of time management, the type of study habit you want to develop will be different if it was a, an exam or a research essay, for example the type of preparation you need to do would also be different for those kind of uh, different assessment items. Um, the form of notes you would take um, would be vastly different um, depending on whether an assessment is a written essay or a take home paper. So thank you, Stephen. Let's move on to the topic of expectations. So what um, can you expect from us? So what's become a popular meme recently is the expectations versus reality and those um, fail memes. And they put two pictures next to each other, like what you think you, you're gonna get and what when you bake the good and what happens. Now, I want to manage, we're trying to manage your expectations at your birth in terms of what you can expect from us as your lecturers, but also what we can expect from you as our students so that this kind of disappointment doesn't occur. So firstly, let's talk about what you can expect from us. Um, feedback and interaction. As Stephen already pointed out, um, 
the thing that we, we pride ourselves in in this law school is that we can give you quality feedback because, um, and you can get to know each other, to know us more intimately. Um, and we, we can engage with you and help you through the process of, of learning, going through these um, different materials for, for learning. Um, so we'll, the first thing we do, we'll strive to respond to your queries in a very timely manner. Uh, and if, but, but having said that, if you feel your query is that one that will benefit the rest of the cohort, please feel free to use the forums like MS Teams, because then, then it, it obviously you help in facilitating this, um, this communal sort of setting for everyone and everyone can also benefit from, from the answer to your question. Uh, weekly announcements will usually um, get, be made through email and give you a sense of that what we are uh, that we are always present for you, as well as um, how the course is unraveling, as well like how it's unfolding. Although it's on, online, you will have you know qualified, living, breathing people instructing you and guiding you through the material, and um, there'll be more um, guidance here that way. Quality teaching. We will engage with you and welcome your insight and discussions on topics. Um, in some ways, online degrees are a better, better um, experience than traditional face-to-face -face because you get more one-to-one -one, uh, um, feedback and engagement. Uh, it's also because we plan everything in advance. Um, and this allows you to access everything at your own time in a flexible way. Um, you're able to cover course material according to your own schedule and review videos if you need more time to understand the material. Um, we also provide support for you in terms of academic skills and time management. So this also helps complement uh, your, your journey through the law degree. Quality research. Um, you can also expect um, to be taught by lecturers who are not only great at delivering material, but also specialist research, researchers in fields of law. Now, the importance of research to an academic institution is undeniable, um, and research is an in-depth study of a particular area um, of law and involves critical analysis of the subject matter. And to be surrounded by a host of academics who take their research seriously means that you are in good hands. Um, not only in terms of developing those research skills for yourself, which is fun, which are fundamental to your future professional lives, but also in terms of the prospect for future opportunities for elective courses and postgraduate instruction. Um, so these give you more opportunities, is what I'm saying. Uh, training on how to think and research as a lawyer. Now, as Nicola has already gone through with you, we have a very practical base focused here at CQ Law. So you'll know that um, lawyers already, you already know from your favorite shows that lawyers speak a special vernacular and we call this legalese. And as your lecturers, we will strive to teach you and impart um, some of these um, so that it's not so unfamiliar to you, these technical terms as well as um, a legal practice is not um, something that is a far away thing, but something you can feel is, is closer to you and as accessible to you in future. So we definitely have a practical focus. Uh, also, we do make, we do take a lot of pains to ensure you understand the ethical standards of the profession. Um, as Nicola also went through with you, it's important for you to understand very early on your ethical obligations as part of, of me future members of the profession, if, uh, um, if that is where you want to go with your law degree. Um, so there, it's quite complex, as Stephen mentioned. There are complex rules around admission, which may impact on you. So it's, it's good to be aware of what you're dealing with very early on. Now, turning to what we can expect from you. So we expect 12.5 hours of study per week per unit. Um, so in the real world, um, for a law degree, and, and we know the law degrees are notoriously a lot of work. So it is true that particular fact. Um, we do require you to have 12.5, put in 12.5 hours per week um, for the law courses you're taking. Um, just in terms of, obviously it's online learning so you can access the material in your own time, but perseverance is a key to help you stay ahead of the curve and ultimately develop good habits for your career as sex, successful legal professionals. Um, the, the way, the advice I would give is think realistically about 
uh, how to schedule your study time um, for the week and before you enroll even, before you enroll in your, your courses. Um, how much time can you afford to commit to these, these um, subjects in addition to the commitments you already have in your lives? Uh, all right, another one is well-written assessments, good grammar and spelling, punctual or effective communication. Now, the second mark of being a great lawyer is that you have excellent communication skills. Um, as a lawyer, you'll, lawyer will law, a law professional involves constant communication, whether that be oral, written or listening, whether that be with your client or the judge or your um, colleagues. So note taking and summarizing skills would get you through each term uh, of your law degree, but it will also end up helping you develop your overall skills when you get out of the law school. Not to mention your written skills uh, for writing essays and legal documents is a must. Your public speaking skills obviously being honed and preparing you for a future where you will be able to negotiate as well as um, speak up in court. Now, another important thing is punctuality. As um, a judge will not wait for you to commence with proceedings. Um, if you're not able to submit on time, please, please, please do not delay. Um, apply for an extension via Moodle and um, usually um, lecturers are very good with, with that if you have the appropriate documentation. So study and pass your exams. You must practice organization and time management, and these are essential skills. Um, but we also, and if you require extension, make the request in advance, um, but make sure that you're organized. Um, and at a minimum, you must pass all your exams. Um, this is something that we can't bypass um, because Nicola already spoke to you about the pre Lee 11, and these are requirements that we as a law school need to also show so that you are ready for practice. Participate online. Um, another trait of a successful legal professional is that they are cooperative. So it's very important to start early on and engaging with fellow students, engaging with your peers and lecturers, being respectful to each other. That's a great way of um, honing your cooperation skills. Um, and it will really um, be great for preparing you uh, for future practice. So that's something that is also uh, an expectation of ours that you respectfully engage with other students and your academics. Um, and the, the, be the, the better your engagement, the more it will benefit you um, throughout your little degree in many different ways. So be nice to each other because the, the people you see in your Zoom sessions might be very much the people you see in the context uh, of your um, professional lives in the future. Uh, academic integrity. Now, this is a very important um, for you early on, and, and Stephen's already touched upon it and the implications for admission. So make sure that you're well across uh, some of the academic integrity standards here at CQU and what um, constitutes cheating or collusion, etc., plagiarism. Take every placement opportunity. Um, if you see most of um, every opportunity to learn and enhance your legal and social skills, don't hesitate, just go for it. Um, I think it's very good um, that you never know what doors small legal researcher roles or clerkships will open. Uh, enjoy yourself would be the thing I leave you with. Look after yourself emotionally and physically. I've noted some of the supporting um, services that are available to you through CQ and this degree will require you commitment in both respects. So um, laugh with your peers in the community, learn to share the load um, in terms of study notes, um, make sure it's not collusion, but you can, you can work together in that way, um, have discussion forums, share law memes, exercise routines, and don't forget, continue to maintain a positive mental attitude and it goes a very long way in this degree. So thank you very much. I'll hand over back to Stephen now. Okay. Well. Just listening to all of that, it sounds completely overwhelming, doesn't it? <laughs> Bernice and probably Bryce are thinking, what on earth have I enrolled or potentially enrolled myself in? Well, it takes time and you gradually get exposed to all of these things. So it's, you know, it, it does take um, a lot of effort to complete your law degree, but we've had lots of graduates and we've got lots of students. Um, most of our students tend to be part-time and they spread their load because they've got family and other commitments. But it's certainly not impossible, but it's not easy either. 
Um, but what you do is you gradually work your way through and learn all of these elements that make up a law degree. So I just want to stress that at the beginning because it probably feels quite overwhelming. Um, another key aspect of the um, ethical obligations is one in which if you've got any past, anything in your past that, uh, for example, any offences that you may have committed or other issues which you think might impact on your actual admission into the profession, that's something you probably um, should raise with me so that I can give you some, um, some pointers on that. So I was on the New South Wales Legal Practitioners Admission Board for I think, nine years. I've seen many of these things. So if there's anything in your past that you might be concerned about, um, potentially impacting on your eventual admission, as I say, um, contact me so that we can go through that um, confidentially. Okay, there's um, only a couple of slides left. <laughs> You'll be glad to know. Uh, firstly, just some key information. In terms of adding units, so once you enrol, you can add units right up till the 19th of March. So you can chop and change. Um, but there is a, a census date, and that's the 30th of March. And the census date is a Commonwealth date where universities have to advise what the enrolments are so that the Commonwealth government can um, set all of its budgetary requirements around that. So that's essentially the last day that you can chop and change before you start running into academic or financial penalties. And you don't want to do that. So you've got until the 30th of March to work out um, exactly what you're enrolling in. Um, and uh, also if there's any tuition fees and student contributions, all of those things are due then. One of the things you really do need to do is regularly check your CQU email. I know it's you're quite used to using your own personal emails, but in terms of email traffic, the university will communicate to you through CQU email, which when you enroll, you get allocated an email address. Um, so you do that quite regularly. I'd suggest daily, also Moodle and Microsoft Teams, because that's where all of the activity is happening. So. To be part of the process, you need to engage with those forms of, of communication. Okay, uh, the next slide is all about help. Uh, a lot of this actually Constance has um, touched upon. There's lots of places to get help. Um, because of all of the technology you've got to get used to, TASAC, which has been mentioned several times, is the place which will help you um, to deal with any technology issues. Uh, and they have uh, sub-branches within that that deal with Moodle inquiries and other types of inquiries. So they're, and they're really good. They help both staff and students, and I can certainly vouch for them. They're very good at their job. Um, there's also other sorts of organisations that you can go to. So Studiosity is an example of that. The university subscribes to that. That's an outside provider that helps students with assignments and uh, reads through them and gives them advice on how they can be improved. Within the university, there's the Academic Learning Centre, which I think Constance, you've mentioned, that's quite good. There's librarians, they're also quite good at helping you come to groups and getting used to how to do research. Um, there's ultimately, when you get enrolled, there's a course planner, which sets out all of the units um, that you do and when you should do them. And I'd really encourage you to stick to the course planner <laughs> Uh, if you start to diverge from that, sometimes you can't do the elective that you want to do because you haven't got the timing right. Um, so it's a good idea to plan that out in advance. Your initial, um, when you initially start with uh, CQU, most of the time you're doing the core unit. So that's not going to be much of an issue in terms of the course planner. But later as you progress through the degree, it becomes more of an issue because that's when the electives start to become more important than you have to make decisions about what you're interested in. There are course advisors. So these are not academic staff, they're administrative staff, but they help you with your course planner, making sure that you've met uh, things such as prerequisites because some subjects, some units rather require you to have done other units first so that when you do this um, unit with a prerequisite, you've actually got the necessary um, background to be able to do it and cope with it. Uh, generally, you should talk to your unit coordinator and also there are year level discipline leads. So Susan Bird is first year, Nicola, who we've got here this evening is second year, Lance Rundle is third year. 
So when you look at the codes for units, it might say laws 11057. So what that means is the 11 means it's first year. So it has a one for first year. If it was laws 12 and then the rest of it, that's second year, laws 13 is third year. So that's how you distinguish where, where a particular unit sits within the, within the actual course. And as you progress through those years, the units actually become more difficult. So you start off with easier units, although they mightn't seem easy when you first start because you're coming to grips with everything. But as you progress, the units actually become more difficult. And by the time you get to third year, they're approaching what you would, um, the sort of experiences you'll start to see in practice. So they become more difficult. But your skill level to deal with that has improved significantly as you progress through. Uh, if you need support, there's um, counselling services, there's um, the Office of Indigenous Engagement, there's the Ali program for the LGBTI um, support. There's all sorts of uh, accessibility services with people with ty different types of disabilities or medical conditions, etc. So there's lots of support around. So you should never really feel isolated. If you've got a problem, you should um, approach your unit coordinator or if you're concerned about that, you can certainly ask me uh, or your year discipline lead and they'll point you in the right direction to deal with whatever the particular issue is. So lots of support. So, okay, we've been talking ad nauseum. So now's your chance to ask us some questions if you've, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask or concerns. So, Glenys. Yes, hi, Stephen. Hi, hi, Constance. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm a QUT um, student transferring from QUT to this university. Um, the pa papers that I've already done, can I have those counted towards my degree? Okay, uh, yes. So the answer is yes. So what you need to do is to apply for a credit assessment. So what that means ah. is essentially there's a, there's a form that you fill in and uh, you list the subjects that you've done at QUT. And then what we do is we match those up against the subjects that we teach at CQU. Yeah. Uh, and um, if they match, and a lot of them will, uh, you will get credit for those uh, QUT units towards your CQU degree. So that is, oh, wow. I've done those assessments for many years. At the moment, um, they're done by Alex McEwen, which is another one of our lecturers, but it's, a, mm -hmm. it's called a credit assessment. Okay, so that's how that, uh, and that works. And I'm very familiar with the QUT <laughs> subjects. I taught there for 12 years. Oh, uh, wow. So, yeah, so I, I know QUT very well. And other wow. people, Constance, you would know QUT, I suppose, as well. Yeah, I, I, I didn't teach as long as you, Steve, but I did do six months there. So Wow. That's so that's, amazing. Um, yeah, so it's not a problem, Glenice. You just need to, to fill in the form. And if you do a search on the CQ website, you should come up with that form. If you have a problem, just contact me and I'll, I'll get you um, okay. connected to the right place. Okay. Thank you. And one more one more question I have is um, when do we get the um, information or when, when, do, when do we get the, um, what do you call it, where we get the, to the email address and the login? Okay. And All right. So it depends what, stuff. yeah, it depends what stage you're at. So, mm -hmm. um, I think most of the, the people who I'd sent the um, email out advising of this session were people who had received an offer but had not yet accepted. Oh. So, uh, once you accept an offer, then yep. all of the other processes kick in. And, and in due course, you'll, you'll receive all of the enrollment information. And once you enrol, you then get your CQU email address and access to Moodle and all oh, okay. of things open up. All right. That's, that's good. Okay, that's fine. So I'll just wait for um, the information to come because I've already um, accepted the offer. Okay, um, so that will come um, to you. Yeah, so that'll be on its way. Okay. I can't give you the exact date because it, yeah, 
Yeah. Like all the big organizations, there's different teams that manage different things. Um, so we're really the, the backbone of the teaching. So we're the people you interact with to actually learn the law. Um, but there are other uh, central divisions of the university that look after all of the processes of, of actually getting involved. So that will happen. So, but if you are concerned, you can certainly contact those teams and they can, um, they can advise you on the date. All right. Thank you so much for that, Stephen. Okay. All right, Bryce, did you have any questions? Yeah, so just at the um, start of the presentation, when you had like the length of the actual degree, so it was down yep. for three years plus, it mentioned something like a, about a practical side of the degree. Uh, okay, so in terms of getting admitted to the profession, there's, there's two requirements. One is that you do an accredited law degree. Yep. And the second is that you complete a practical legal training course. So that, okay. uh, so your law degrees, in Australia generally are between three to four years. So that's if you're doing a straight law degree. Yeah. Double degree, it can be longer. But if we just stick with a straight law degree, ours is three years. Uh, that's the minimum time you can do it in. Um, okay. Once you've, uh, once you've got near the end of that, if you've say got two electives outstanding, if you've completed all of the core units and you have a couple of electives still outstanding, you can commence the practical legal training course. Now that's, not a course that we run, but there's lots of organizations that do offer that course. So that, for example, there's the College of Law, uh, the QUT has one as well, uh, but there are other ones. Uh, and usually that's about three months, I okay. think, from memory. Uh, yeah, right. And so you can complete that whilst you're completing your last two electives, or you can complete it at the end of your law degree. But both of those requirements have to be met, and then you apply for admission. Okay. After that. Yeah, too easy. Um, and just the other question, um, with this degree, do we need to, before it starts, um, before the first term commences, do we need to order like any textbooks or anything or is that all literally online? Um, so what will so what'll happen is that once you accept your offer and then you start the enrolment process, you'll be given a course planner, which will set out the units that, which you've studied. So if you're starting, are you starting a degree from scratch? So you've never done any law units before? No, no, I've never done, touched on any never of that. Done any okay. In your case, you'll, you'll probably do something like introduction to law, statutory interpretation, and then, you, you know, there's, you might do contract law, you might do torts, but you'll certainly do introduction to law and uh, statutory interpretation pretty much straight away. So um, when you, um, when you, um, enrolled in those units, the actual study guide, and you get access to Moodle, the study guides will set out the, the actual textbooks. I'm not sure whether it shows it on the handbook. Does the actual handbook show that? Do you know, um, Nicola? I can't remember. I've never looked. But um, certainly when you start your, your course, you'll be able to see what the textbooks are. The alternative is to actually ask the bookshop because they get a list of uh, textbooks in advance. And I tell you where you do see that list of textbooks is in the uh, unit profile. So when the unit oh, okay. profile is released, it'll show yeah. you what the textbooks are as well. So there's a few places. Um, oh, yeah, it's all easy. So you can order those through the bookshop or um, the other alternative is you can order them from other sources like the publishers and et cetera. Yeah, no drums. Awesome. Thanks for that. Yeah. But I think your first port of call is really to have a good look at Moodle. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, actually lucky enough to use that for my certificate for foreign government investigation. So I've got a decent understanding of Moodle, at least. Okay, so that's good. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? No? Nicola, do you yeah. want to say something, Nicola? Yeah, I always <laughs> want to add, chip in, you know me. Um, I think, um, Bryce, I should just um, say that the practical legal training co component can be completed with a traineeship instead of a course, if that's what you want to do. And some law firms, particularly regional ones, actually prefer traineeships just because it means that they get to mould you over a, a year. It's normally a year into the the kind of lawyer that they're looking for for that particular region. Um, but having said that, the practical legal training component really um, is it's you can do it completely online, 
with someone like the College of Law. Um, so again, okay. you're not necessarily going to find yourself at a disadvantage if you're in a regional or remote location. So uh, yeah, it's, it's something that everybody has to do. M most law schools that offer law degrees do not offer that part of the training. So just to make that clear as well. Yeah. Um, no. And the final thing was, I was just going to add a bit for people who might be watching this later, Stephen, about if you're sitting on the fence about deciding where to go, Constance has already provided some really good tips about being a law student generally. But um, if you're trying to make a decision, I think one of the things that you want to decide is whether you want a three year degree or a four year degree. And then if you go for three years, um, you really need to be looking closely at how those years are organized. So for example, we run terms, three terms a year rather than two semesters. And what that means is that you can spread your subjects over three terms and you're therefore, your load isn't as high. So if you're trying to do eight units a year, eight subjects a year in two semesters, you're doing four units in one go, which is really intense. Whereas for us to complete the same number of units, you'd be doing three and then two and you know, you can see, so two lots of three and then a two. Um, so you're spreading the load and therefore, um, you know, elevating your chances of doing well, because we all know what it's like to work and study at the same time. It's a, a minefield of juggling all those responsibilities. Um, also, when you're looking at in detail at the other courses that are available to you, think about how many electives you get within that degree program. A lot of the three year online degrees give four electives or around that amount, whereas we've got eight. So it really, we give you the opportunity to really specialize and think about things that you might like to practice in. Um, and then also look at how long they've been running their online course, because as Stephen already said, not only are we, you know, um, uh, have we been doing this a long time and grown substantially, but we research in teaching uh, and teaching specifically online. So we're very much the experts in online delivery and identifying what works for those students who are in that place where they're online, not necessarily connected to people physically. We also understand that whole mature age student online part-time uh, zone as well. And Another thing is also look at the flexibility in those courses as well. We, as Stephen said, we have our stuff on Moodle two weeks prior to the launch of term, which means that for those people who are fly in, fly out, they're able to download what they need and take it and go and do their work in the mines or whatever, and then come back when they're able to and, and drop back into the unit. So there's a lot of flexibility there. Uh, and then also look at whether or not practical opportunities are compulsory or just available as an elective in an online degree. Um, I know that there are um, some universities that provide it as an elective, but you're not guaranteed to be able to do those practical opportunities because they don't have the number of uh, placements available for the numbers of students that they have in those face-to-face -face delivery environments. So make sure that you check that out as well. With ours, it's, um, it's a core requirement that you do it, which means you're exposed to all that practice stuff. And even if you don't get a placement, we've got simulations to really help you learn what you need to be doing in that uh, legal practice environment. And then finally, um, make sure that when you're looking at the electives, you look at what electives they, they offer, whether they're just very basic electives or whether they've got specialisms, because again, as, as we've already said, you know, we've got some specialisms in technology and contemporary law units based on animal law and um, uh, First Nation peoples and the law and those kinds of electives as well. And then finally, I just wanted to add that you might be, you might have heard Constance say a couple of times about how um, law is a lot of work and it's a lot of reading and it is that, I'm not going to lie to you at all, but it's also really worth it. I mean, that it's such a fantastic opportunity that we have as lecturers to see you come in in year one and then go out the door in year three and you're a completely rounded legal professional, you know, and you, you've learned to think like a lawyer and communicate effectively. And uh, we really, it's just great to see people flourish. And so it is worth it um, in the long run. It's a really great outcome at the end during a law degree. It's a really transformative learning experience at university. And I think that's it. I think I've talked to everyone to death now. <laughs>
Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, Nico. Look, you made a lot of really good points there. So, um, well, the other thing that occurred to me as well with the practical legal training um, course alternatives, you can actually do uh, time with a judge as an associate as another way. So, for example, in my case, this is a long time ago, I did a year with a Supreme Court judge and a year in a law firm. And that was the, the two-year article requirement. So I didn't do a PLT course at that stage. I did articles as they, as they, they were known. So there are other um, alternatives as well. But most people gen, uh, tend to do the PLT courses these days because they're a shorter way into the, into the profession. Okay. Are there any other questions or are we all? Just one, one, yep. one more question. Um, I'm doing the double de degree, mm -hmm. which is um, the accounting and the, the law mm -hmm. degree. Yep. Um, so in terms of the getting help for the accounting side um, of the degree, the, the degree, yeah. uh, where, where would I get that? Okay, so what will happen in your case, when you do your credit assessment, make sure that you put in both the law units as well as the accounting units that you've completed. Yeah. What will happen is that um, um, the law college, because there's two colleges within our school, so the Law Criminology Justice College will assess oh. the law units and yep. the College of Business will assess your business units oh. and then we will work out what you can can get in terms of maximum credit um, yep. but you will have unit coordinate the equivalent of unit coordinates and everything else in the business college as well okay oh, I but, see. Um, we actually own the double degree our college owns the double degree so we're all yeah. responsible for your progression through it but oh. we can manage your situation quite readily so yeah, Thank you. in your case, the credit assessment's really important. So how far advanced are you, Glenys? How much? How I've, much? I've got a business degree and I've done two years at QUT, so. Okay, so you would have you would have got uh, allowances at QUT and your double degree for the previously completed business yeah, degree. Yeah, that's right, right. yeah. We'll do the same thing, so we'd have to do that assessment. So that's okay, okay. We, we can all work that out. Thank you for that. No worries. All right, then, if there's no further questions, I'd just like to thank everybody for participating. And um, I'll make, we've got a recording of this and I'll make that available to anybody who um, um, wasn't able to attend tonight. So I do hope that you ultimately decide to enroll with us. Sounds like, um, Glenn, you've already done that. And Bryce, you seem keen as well. So we, you know, on that basis, we welcome you to the college and make sure you get to know everybody. There's lots of support. And um, I look forward to you know, seeing you progress through the, the next few years. Can't wait to start, Stephen. Can't wait to start. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Embrace. I'll see you. We'll stop there and end. So good night. Nice. <laughs> Thanks.